Okay, that worked. Graduates, if we could have the, the graduates on the side, if you could line up in order behind that last row, we'll make sure you have what you need. Make sure you are in order. Looks like we need some more chairs. All right. I got your face. Do we have enough of them? All right. Going to get our graduates some chairs. Just bear with us.
Teamwork makes the dream work. Give our faculty and parents a hand, please. We're going to get this show started. Thank you so much. If we could have everyone stand for the national anthem. Good evening. My name is Lucy Gold. On behalf of the Peyton College Prep Class of 2022, School Administration, and the Peyton Local School Council, I would like to welcome you to our commencement ceremony. I would also like to take this time to recognize our, our esteemed guests, Ms. Betsy Shepard and Ms. Sarah Duncan. It's hard to believe that this day is finally here. Peyton to me is the fact that you can be a part of things that you didn't even know existed, let alone would change your world. Looking back on my high school journey, the encapsulating moments are those of screaming the words to John Denver's country roads with 40 football players as their manager while we celebrate their victory on the field. At Peyton, this blonde haired, blue eyed, 5'6 Sicilian Jewish girl found her community amongst the football team. Our school is special because you don't just get to be a part of life-changing experiences, you have people literally cheering you on from the stands as you get to do what you are passionate about. If we're being honest, the people make Peyton. I'm often asked about my high school experience. Many people know about the top high school named after beloved football player Walter Peyton, but they don't know about inside. I always explain, you know, wherever you go, there will always be good days and bad, and I would not change a single second of high school because of the people who have come into my life and changed me for the better. I have met people who I now consider family during my time as a Walter Payton Grizzly. As, as I'm up here with all of you, I recognize that this has been an event for four years, to say the least. So I would like to take this opportunity for us all to take a second to take the moment in and celebrate the fact that you are here at graduation. We made it. Everyone here today deserves to know that someone is proud of them and excited for what they will do in the future. So if you've not heard it yet, I am proud of you. Today is the first step in the rest of our lives and in everything you do going forward. Be kind, work hard, and live to your values. Never forget that once a grizzly, always a grizzly. To our friends, family, and guests in attendance today, it is with great pride that I invite you to celebrate this very special day with us. With that being said, we ask that you remain respectful throughout the ceremony to ensure that all students receive the recognition that they deserve. We trust that you will exercise sound judgment as we celebrate our achievements. On, on behalf of the class of 2022, I wanna thank you again for coming this evening and I hope that you are proud. Thank you and go Grizzlies.
take my hand, hold it tight. I will protect you from all around you. I will be here, don't you cry. You're one so small, you seem so strong. My arms will hold you, keep you safe and warm. This bond between us can't be broken. I will be here, don't you cry.
Good evening, Grizzly families. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce our student speaker, Jonah Carafio. Jonah will be leaving us for Harvard University to study mathematics. Jonah comes to you today as a two-year captain of the boys' tennis team and first in the city for his doubles team. He is also a Peyton advisory leader and overnight camp counselor. Last year, he was the recipient of the Fogelson Family Foundation Award for Math Research. Fun fact about Jonah, he spent many an hour in the math department office as a toddler. His teachers describe him as curious, playful, and persistent, qualities that will serve him well as he goes out in the world. Please join me in welcoming Jonah. First off, on this day of celebration, at the end of a journey, I'd like to thank everyone who made all four years, and specifically this year, possible. To the custodial staff and engineers for keeping our building running and enabling us to learn in person. Even under normal circumstances, custodians and engineers have an interminable list of tasks to perform for our well-being. This already immense list was made even longer and more challenging during the pandemic. Custodians had to disinfect every single room every single day, and engineers constantly fixed air purifiers, ventilation systems, and jammed windows, all while I'm sure they were worried about the safety of their own families. We simply could not have returned to school without your efforts. To the security team for keeping us safe during a time when many do not feel safe at school. In the wake of the tragic shootings, such as those at Robb Elementary School and Oxford High School, Many students no longer feel safe at school. Thanks to your work over these four years, I'm grateful to say that I always did. To Dr. Shabazz and her administrative team for the great lengths they went to to make our senior year special. You were transitioning to a new year, uh, to a new school in a year that was far from normal, yet still found time to make us feel valued. To Peyton's phenomenal teachers who foster a sense of community where we can learn free from the fear of making mistakes. From speaking up in language classes to attempting a math problem in front of our peers, learning can be scary. Our teachers have cultivated an environment that allows students to share their thinking without judgment. Without your efforts, we would not be able to learn from each other. And to the parents, I can't tell you how many times a Peyton parent has saved the day. The Prus rescued my Birkenstocks at pre-prom pictures. The folks provided me countless rides to and from tennis practice. The Ricketts volunteered to proctor an 8 a.m. AP exam. The list goes on. Peyton's parents are the backbone of our community. And what's more, you raised the amazing young adults I'm proud to graduate with today. When I was a rising freshman, I had three goals. Get straight A's, get fives on all my AP exams, and get into U Chicago. I accomplished none of these things. The real failure, however, was not my high school experience. It was the metrics I used to evaluate it. During high school, my greatest achievements were not those that are found in the content of my college applications. Rather, they are found in the content of my character. When I was a sophomore, Lucy Gold and Rem Johan Connect taught me initiative. At the onset of a pandemic, there was a dire need for tutoring for underserved students around the city. Rem and Lucy founded Connecting Chicago to serve these students. And in their first year, they brought tutoring to over 1,250 Chicagoans. <laughs> Lucy and Rem taught me that every one of us can make, di make a difference as long as we take action. During my junior year, my BIPOC peers taught me about the problems they face that I was oblivious to. Because of the BIPOC Instagram page my peers created during the summer of 2020, I learned that many of my classmates were having very different experiences with Peyton than I was having. I wouldn't even have known to ask about these experiences if you hadn't been so brave in sharing them and trusting me to listen. My BIPOC peers taught me that just because I am unaware of inequities, it doesn't mean they don't exist. And more importantly, that we all have a role to play in creating a world where differences are a source of strength and not of division.
Throughout my senior year, Bobby Cubs taught me the importance of good questions. When working through countless problem sets with Bobby, his questions always brought my understanding to greater heights. By questioning our work and forcing me to rethink concepts I thought I understood, he helps me become a much stronger mathematician. Bobby taught me that the most important questions are not asked by professors, but by peers. And finally, just a few weeks ago, the girls lacrosse team taught me perseverance. Earlier this season, they lost a close match 9-12 to to Lane Tech. Instead of licking their wounds and feeling sorry for themselves, they got right back to work with a renewed passion to win. They got their revenge in the city championships, winning 7-6 to to claim Peyton's first city championship in program history. These athletes taught me that the road to success is, is paved with mistakes well handled. It is impossible to retain all we have learned over these past four years. So we must pick and choose what is important and what is not. And so as we enter a world desperately in need, in need of gun safety reform, in need of healthcare for all, in need of increased environmental protections, I urge you to remember the values that our classmates have instilled in us because if the world needs anything, it's a little more grisly in it. It needs people with perseverance, with, the initi with initiative, with the courage to question and speak out. It needs people like you who transformed 14-year-old Jonah into the person I am today. Because of you, no one could attend Peyton for four years and not come out a better person, more real, more whole, more compassionate. And so, my greatest thanks goes to my classmates, the class of 2022. Our next student speaker is Jana Richardson. Jana will join the public policy crew at Princeton University this fall. She is passionate about social and racial justice and has served as an active member of her community. She launched her podcast, The Bottom Line, in January 2021, where she hosts conversations with teens about politics, identity, and progress. She joined the Mayor's Youth Commission in October 2021, serving as the public safety chair and working alongside the Mayor's Office to address issues facing Chicago teens. She received the Mayor's Medal of Honor this April for her service. As a Grizzly, she's participated in the varsity debate team for three years, served as the diversity chair of student government, and as Peyton advisory leader. Please join me in welcoming Jana. Hello friends, family, and the class of 2022. It is my honor to speak today on behalf of the graduating class. When I joined the Peyton community, I knew I would be surrounded by peers who are uniquely special and gifted. As I look around, I know I am standing before future global leaders and thinkers. During class discussions and club meetings, I would be amazed by the brilliance of my peers. We think critically, creatively, and multidimensionally. Peyton's culture discourages mediocrity and complacency. As a member of the Peyton community, I became radicalized and energized because Peyton is filled with action-oriented people. Because we are rarely satisfied with the status quo, we are the first to question existing institutions take up projects to address harm in our community, and create organizations that serve others and encourage inclusivity. Conversely, school has also existed as a space that perpetuates a heightened culture of excellence, or grind culture. Sometimes it hangs so thick in the air, it's almost tangible. We are natural overachievers, a quality and work ethic that distinguishes us but also drives us to lose sleep in order to finish a project or enroll in five too many AP classes. And as members of an elite institution like Peyton, we have all become familiar with the pervasive culture of, of competition, 
A lot of us have mastered the humble brag. We even compete with ourselves, so much so that we do not celebrate our personal victories. And strangely enough, this culture is passed along casually and talked about colloquially. And somehow, this is the culture of our community that has resulted in city championships, selective college admissions, and rewarding victories. I have been reflecting on, my, on the many nights I cried about not having the time to apply for scholarships, finish homework assignments, and upload another episode of my podcast by the next day. And though all the things on my to-do list would get done, I would often wonder what it's worth to just feel jaded, depleted, and emotionally spent. I have realized, maybe slightly too late because I could have saved some of my tears, that the victory will not be worth it if I am too exhausted to enjoy it. I realized that my model of success equated burnout, sleep deprivation, and exhaustion with true happiness. But I know now that with this model, I cannot thrive or sustain myself. To my fellow graduates, I am asking you, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? I did not come up with that perfectly crafty question. That's from the Bible, the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 36. Many of us work this hard so we can be accepted to a highly ranked undergraduate program, attend a prestigious grad school, be hired for a high paying job to ultimately be happy. And don't get me wrong, I want all those things too, but I know I don't want them in that order. Our pursuit of greatness should not come at the cost of the detriment of our spiritual health or mental and emotional well-being. We can, should, and deserve to gain the world, but never at the expense of a prosperous soul. If we are to advance to the next level of achievement and accomplishment, we need the strength and resources to do good and produce good work in spite of the circumstances happening to or around us. That is what it means to prosper. This is my charge to you, class of 2022. I urge you to, pri to prioritize the health and strength and pri prosperity of your soul because the soul houses our reserves of resilience. Resilience is necessary if we are to advance to the next level of accomplishment because there will be greater pressure. Greater accomplishments lead to more abundant opportunities, which means more responsibility. Your personal infrastructure must be able to bear the weight of greatness. This is why you need to build your resilience by strengthening your mental, emotional, and spiritual support structures. I urge you to expand your understanding of success, happiness, and contentment. Degrees, financial stability, and status are markers of prosperity, but I would argue they should be outer manifestations of inner conditions. Joy, peace, grace, compassion, which I believe is true prosperity. Our ability to achieve success will either be hindered or propelled by our personal health and wellness. So again, on your quest toward living and leading a prosperous life, remember to take care of yourselves and one another. You are your greatest asset. Thank you. Okay, first of all, before I begin, I would like to invite Julia Gershberg to the stage to say this with me. Okay. 
Okay. I'll say I'll say my thing first, and you say yours, and say the first paragraph, and say last paragraph. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon to everyone who has the privilege of joining us on this momentous occasion. My name is Atiyah Shafe, and I'm the outgoing president of Peyton International Honor Society. And my name is Julia Gershberg, and I'm president of student government. Every year at graduation, we honor the memory of an amazing young woman named Lisette Santiago. Lisette Santiago was part of Peyton's class of 2005. She was an exemplary student, a passionate writer, an aspiring doctor, and an exceptionally caring person adored by everyone. At just 16 years old, her vibrant and promising life was cut short by cancer. Lisette never used her illness as an excuse. During her time at Peyton, she scheduled chemotherapy appointments at night so that she wouldn't have to miss school. The bravery, courage, and tenacity Lisette showed is a testament to her character and inspiration to all. In her memory, National Honor Society and student government are honored to present the Lisette Santiago Award. This award goes to a student of the class of 2022 who models courage and persistence in the face of adversity. Congratulations to Frank Ward. Um, I love you guys. Uh, thank you all for coming and uh, shout out to the class and shout out to my mom, my grandparents. <laughs> thank you all so much. Uh, shout out to Ms. Kajic too. We'd like to invite Betsy Shepard up to the stage to present the Walter Payton Sweetness Award. Nobody in this room knows who's getting the Walter Payton Memorial Scholarship this year. This is my, um, wow, 15th or 16th year of awarding this scholarship on behalf of the Walter Payton family. Um, it's the Walter Payton Scholarship was started by Eddie Payton, his brother, his sister Pam, and their mother who's passed away, Aileen, who has visited, they've all visited Walter Payton Scholar, Walter Payton High School so many times, and everyone treated them like absolute royalty they are. I can tell you this, um, when I say your name, come forward. And I'm using my iPhone like you kids. This is the day I look forward to every year. While every student at Peyton is incredible in their own right, the Walter Peyton Scholarship found one who, was, who embodies the characteristics we look for in a recipient of the Walter Peyton Memorial Scholarship. Leadership, community service, compassion, strive for excellence, everything Walter Payton demonstrated on and off the field. We also consider financial hardships the family has. We actually wanna make a difference in the student's life awarding the money to help their dreams come true. When I was talking with Eddie Payton today, I told him I needed to write my speech. He asked what I was going to say about this amazing recipient. Then I realized I couldn't say anything better than the student has already written. Here's a paragraph from their essay. I get verklempt, sorry. 
In my experience with Peyton, it can be defined by its teachers. The math teachers understand the path to success often contains failures. The science teachers allowed me to finally find what I wanted to do in college, or at the very least, the track of it. The social science department taught me the world is ever-changing and that it is all within our power to make history. Yet what I learned from Peyton didn't always come from teachers, but from the students as well. I don't know how many times I've learned something new from an enrichment one of my own friends is hosting. Seminars like Kids Impacting Disease through Science Advisory Board allowed me to make connections with Lurie Children's Hospital and be part of their wonderful programs. Ultimately, what Peyton me, allowed me to do was become a leader in my own community. Nicholas Lagunas, you are the 2022 Walter Payton Scholarship recipient. And we know that you will make us very proud at Northwestern University. And I can keep an eye on you. And go Cubs. Uh, He's shaking. <laughs> they all do. Um, I guess I wasn't expecting to be up here, but when I get the chance, I would always love to say a huge thank you to my parents, uh, my mom, who's always pushing me forward, and my dad, who's cool persona, I guess. <laughs> Uh, it's always there for me, and I would like to just thank the community of Peyton um, for just giving me the tools for myself to succeed, and I know it's given you the tools to become better people as well, and thank you again for this opportunity. Good afternoon, graduates and families. My name is Natalie Selton Long, and it is an honor to introduce our commencement speaker. Sarah Duncan is the co-executive director with the Network for College Success. She began her career with Aerial Education Initiative in 1991, coordinating the I Have a Dream program, working to improve the life chances of 40 seventh graders from Shakespeare School. In her 12-year tenure with Ariel, she worked in every aspect of the nonprofit, designing and implementing academic enrichment and job programs, raising funds, supervising and supporting staff and volunteers, and board development, finance, and planning. In 1996, Ariel opened a Chicago public school through the Small Schools Initiative, and Sarah worked to help develop the staff, curriculum, program, and policy at the school. The Ariel Community Academy became a community school before the term was popularized, offering before and after school programs, as well as clubs and services for parents and a unique economics and investment curriculum. Sarah started teaching at the University of Chicago School of Social Service Administration in 2004, where she developed the Leadership in Community Schools program and helped to support the quickly growing community schools movement in Chicago with professional development opportunities for school teams and community school managers. Sarah co-founded the Network for College Success in 2006 to support school leaders with research and data, peer networks, and job embedded coaching to improve student outcomes, particularly high school graduation and college success. Sarah is a board member of the Aerial Education Initiative and the McDougall Family Foundation. She was also a founding board member of the Young Women's Leadership Charter School of Chicago. Because of Sarah's contributions to bettering our community, I'm exceptionally excited to hear the words she has to share with us. My fellow peers, can we give an outstanding round of applause to the hardworking and passionate Ms. Sarah Duncan. Good afternoon. Thank you, Natalie, so much for the introduction. It's never good to hear your own introduction, but I appreciate it. And I want to thank all of you for the opportunity to be with you today. It's a momentous occasion. 
The theme in my career has been organizing adults around the success of young people, and today is a really beautiful example of that. You graduates surrounded by your families, the faculty, the staff, your friends. It takes a lot to get to this day. Students, I know you've put in long nights, piles of homework, a lot of studying and cramming for tests. You've put other things aside. You've prioritized your education. And I applaud you for that. And I would echo your student speakers to say that that's not the only most important thing, right? Celebration, and that's what we're doing today. You've made it through a pandemic. We're almost through the pandemic, I hope. And you've endured losses. You had, you had the pandemic complete shutdown during a very critical year. And that's different than for your class than any other class before or after. You've been a part of the racial reckoning in our society that, that the student speakers also spoke about. And you've proved yourselves. Families. I know what it takes to get a young person to this day in life. From the diapers and the long nights and the sick babies to the conversations, the guidance, the tears, the worry, the support. And goodness knows a lot of food. Graduates, I invite you to stand, face your families, and give them a round of applause. So what does this day mean? It's the last time you all will be together in a room. After four years of various kinds of togetherness, togetherness in the school, togetherness on Google Classroom, in group chats. Graduation is one of the ways we mark your transition into adulthood. And that, and that transition is characterized by changing relationships with your family, with your friends, and with yourself. And in this beautiful moment of being surrounded by love, I'm really honored and thrilled to offer you some words. Be your own best friend. This sounds like a simple thing. But what does it mean? It means when you talk to yourself, speak to yourself like you would speak to your best friend with love. If you hear yourself putting yourself down, belittling or demeaning yourself, you have to stop because you wouldn't speak to your best friend like that. When things get hard, you, know, you have to know how to sit with yourself and grieve and also when to tell yourself to stand up. It's time to stand up and move forward. Life involves a lot of standing up and doing things that you know are too hard and that you have to draw on the resilience that Jana spoke of. And part of being your own best friend is to tell yourself hard truths the way you expect your best friend to tell you to tell you when you're not being kind or you're being unfair and when you're not being your best self. Second, being human is largely about managing emotions. No one ever told me this. Your emotions matter, but they can't drive you. You have to, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't work either to repress them or to obey them. You have to he sit with them, consider them, and decide what the best course of action is. In your next step, at some point, you will likely feel like a failure or an imposter, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that it's true. It means that you're suffering, 
And that's when you need to be your own best friend. Third, and related, it's important to ask for help when you need it. There are resources out there for you. Seek them out. Find them. Nobody does this alone. This room is a symbol of that. You may have heard of the saying to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Yeah? Most people don't know that, but that original meaning was to try to do something absurd or foolish. You can't pull yourself up by holding on to your boots. It doesn't even make any sense. And it's interesting that that has become sort of a paragon of what it means to be American. It's impossible and absurd, and you shouldn't try it. <laughs> Nobody makes it alone. So I remind you of the group of people who got you to this day. Some of them are here. Some of them are on the stage. Some of them aren't here with you today. You will expand this group of people into your young adulthood. And as the brilliant, accomplished young people who you are, you have so much to offer the world. And I know you will. Congratulations, class of 2022. Good evening. It is my distinct pleasure to have words before what you all came to see, so I will keep it brief. <laughs> it has been a sincere honor and privilege to serve as principal for your senior year of high school class of 2022. I believe that high school should consist of a series of memorable and life-shaping moments that develop students as they explore adolescence and ultimately lay the foundation for their development into adulthood. I hope that this year has been as memorable for you as it has been for me. As your principal, I would like to share with you an overview of a book. It's called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. This book explores what I consider to be invaluable wisdom that I did not have the opportunity to learn until well into my adulthood. According to Don Miguel Ruiz, everything we do is based on agreements that we have made. Agreements with ourselves, with other people, with God or the universe, with life. But the most important agreements are the ones that we make with ourselves. In these agreements, we tell ourselves who we are, how to behave, what is possible, and what is impossible. One single agreement is not such a problem, but we have many agreements that come from fear, deplete our energy, and diminish our self-worth. In the four agreements, Don Miguel reveals the source of self-limiting agreements that rob us of joy and create needless suffering. When we are ready to change these agreements, there are four deceptively simple yet powerful agreements that we can adopt as guiding principles. The four agreements offer a powerful code of conduct that can rapidly transform our lives to a new experience of freedom, true happiness, and love. And I am about to share those agreements with you right now, and they're gonna go by quickly. The four agreements, be impeccable with your word, speak with integrity, say only what you mean, avoid using words to speak against yourself or gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. The second agreement, don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. 
When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. Agreement number three, don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. And lastly, but probably most important, always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. Colin Powell stated, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. I would also add that success also includes the agreements that we make with ourselves. The agreement to treat others the way we want to be treated, to live with integrity, compassion, courage, curiosity, and indelible character. The agreement to be a good neighbor and support one another in feast as well as famine, and to always be the best versions of ourselves. As you go through life, always remember the times you shared and the lessons you learned as a student at Payton College Prep. Lastly, remember to be disciplined in your thoughts and actions. Create a plan for yourself and commit to meeting the goals and outcomes in your plan. Successful people know that discipline, not desire, will ultimately determine your destiny. I look forward to the success. I look forward to hearing of your success in the years to come. You have created your own legacy that will stand the test of time. At this time, we will begin the awarding of the diplomas. They gotta get to this, he's gotta get to this. <laughs> All right. We have a photographer here that will take beautiful pictures of your students. So I ask that we keep the ceremony as respectful as possible. Everyone wants to hear their student's name called. Thank you in advance. All right. And if we could have the first row stand and we have you loop this way, you're gonna come up this stairwell. Let's go the other way, that way. This way, Janiah. There we go, perfect. All right. All right, Mr. Potter. I'm pleased to announce the graduates from Advisory 146. Janiah Rice. <laughs> and Your Highness Shaw. Congratulations, 146. Good evening. 
um, for, uh, since I'm first, I'll just say a word or two. <laughs> um, every morning I get to see these lovely people come in and shine their lights on me. And I want to say that it has really been my honor and privilege to see them go from young, well, the boys are like this, the girls come in like this, but the boy go like this, right? The, um, the kids grow from young, uh, from, from little teenagers to, to young adults, and what a fine group of young adults they have become. I would like to um, call on Advisory 201. Oscar Bocelli. Joshua Bueno. <laughs> Elijah Catania. <laughs> Natalie Cavallo. Katerina Faulkner. <laughs> Vincent Fetch. <laughs> Adriana Jeju. Theo Goldman. <laughs> Summer Harris. <laughs> Anne Hines. Sedona Kessler. Caitlin Lee. Amy Lee. Dylan Mark. Samuel McElrath. Bennett Patterson. Uh, Benjamin Perez. Grace Pfeiffer. Brendan Ricketts. Katie Stitch Batch. Cameron Sullivan. <laughs> Brecken von Leibheisen. Nancy Chow. Thank you, 201.
All right, um, my dear 202 kiddos, we have been together for four years. Every moment I enjoy to see you, to see your lovely faces around me in the morning and say hi to me. Now it's time for you to fly. Please fly high. And remember, our patent is always your safety net. All right, so everybody, now I'm going to read your names and have a good fortune and enjoy your future. Enjoy your adventure. Thanks. Brandon Calderon. Mandy Chen. Kyle Chu. Anastasios Chronopolis. Colleen Dialum. <laughs> Kaylin Farty. <laughs> Benicio Ferrer. Catherine Foster. <laughs> Alondra Gallardo. <laughs> Nia Ines. Sophia Iterode. <laughs> Charles Johnson. <laughs> Maya Kafali. Jonah Carafel. <laughs> Kevin McCrawy. Crawry. <laughs> Jonathan Miller. Karen Moy. <laughs> Ayinde Reese. <laughs> Cora Star. Richard Taining. <laughs> Shay Wondermead. <laughs> Nadia Weehawk.
Lastly, VRL. All right, congratulations, Advisory 203. We have uh, Drina Agochi. <laughs> Oliver Bruce. <laughs> Albert Castillo. Anaya Chase Mayfield. <laughs> Isabella Chittero. <laughs> Aiden Chung. Juan Cortez. <laughs> Amisha Dalal. <laughs> Annika Duji. <laughs> Gabriel Essex. Natan Furman. <laughs> Margaret Goldman. <laughs> Joseph Gomez. Michelle Wu. <laughs> Rem Johan Connect. <laughs> Alejandro Giulianis. <laughs> Leo Cantro. Sofia Ribeiro. Jana Richardson. Joe Sandbo. Tess Scrivener. <laughs> Natalie Velasquez. <laughs> Nathan Verscher. Lily Wu. All right, my friends from Advisory 204, it was a pleasure, absolute pleasure to spend four years with you. My first, Zulhasnat Ahmad. Harry Biggerman.
Stephen Chen. Cameron Coat. Stephen, well done. <laughs> Jack Dawson. <laughs> Hannah Pearl Goldwyn. Michael Gould. Evan Gray. Chelsea He Chan. Julian Hennessy. Isaac Herrera. Alexandria Holly. Thea Kidwell. <laughs> Alana Seibel Cordon. <laughs> Nathan Leong. Rogelio Laz Lozano. <laughs> Adriana Matazans Rodriguez. <laughs> Sophia Patel Mays. Tokes Opefa. <laughs> Dianella Ruiz. <laughs> Michaela Tom. Sophia White. <laughs> Elias Wilkin. <laughs> Congratulations, 2022. My love to you all. Advisory 205, it has been a pleasure to serve as your advisor. Let's get this party started. Hannah Bartels. Griffin Bonin Jones. Kamari Brown. Ariana Cabrera. Anna Carpenter. Sophia Caston. Susanna Connolly.
Ezra Danzig. Catherine Gillespie. Jack Goodman. Ryan Harrington. Luke Hilgart. Adam Lewis. Miriam May. Malcolm Newmark. <laughs> Stephanie Paredes. <laughs> Natalie Pastor. <laughs> Olivia Ramish. Syed Shah, Julian Villegas, George Woodson. Jada Wortlaw, and Mandy Zane. Congratulations. Advisory 206, I'm so proud of you. Natalie Becker Stevens. Griffin Brownrider. <laughs> Rafael Cruz. <laughs> Nadine Denahan. <laughs> William Frank. Alex Ander Freeling. Jackson Friedlander. Alyssa Gonzalez. Wing Tung Gua. Dylan Heidetzdorf. Jaded Lanka. Jaina Magruder. Elizabeth Norton. Benjamin O'Mara. <laughs> Niabella Ortiz. Ansel Pearson. Sophie Rodriguez. Angel Romero. <laughs> Megan Salzman. <laughs> Abike Cholet. <laughs> Frank Tiberia. Leslie Walker. Yeah. 
and Evan Wong. Nice job, Arlene. All right. It has been my distinct honor and pleasure to be with you, 207. Thank you so much to your families. What an incredible honor. I love you so much. Let's keep this party going. Here we go. Wyatt Atkinson. Iliane Cecilio. Jessica Chen. Angie Conejo. Lucas Kozuk. Nora Denahan. Felix Farb. Chadrick Jabin. Charles Harmoning. Nicholas Hoag. Lillian Kibbe. Sarah Rose Clavat. Tiffany Liao. Stephanie Obispo. Grace Peña. John Plebanski. Sage Ralston. Tania Singleton. Savvy Smith. Colin Simons. Tristan Edward Tucker. Violet A. Weber. Nick Wu. I love you. All right, Advisory 208, let's graduate! Okay, Raymond Ackerson. Maxwell Beach. Noah Biden. Alan Chan. <laughs> uh, Atia Shafe. Thank you. Ian Falk. <laughs> Sophia Florek Carlson. Delano R. Herkert. Jaden Klein. Parneet 
Kular. Camilla Martinez. Salem Maru. Janice May. Charlotte Patty. Allie Powell. <laughs> Xavier Sandibo. Ilma Sarailich. August Haume Sasaki. Jacob Stroop. Sao Yi Tian. April Eustavinus. Ani Angelea Vargas. Verania Zaragoza. All right, 209, let's graduate. Ruth Bowman. Summer Flowers. Lily Sophia Geis. <laughs> Hannah Hafner. <laughs> Nolan Hay. <laughs> George Hubner. Zach James. Charisma Johnson. Steele Kirsten. Natalia Klaus. Shu Yi Lu Lila Marhava Ben McBride Surya Nua Ivan Torres Jacqueline Tovar. Maribel Valerio. Sky Wang. Blair Warren. Angela Wu. And last but not least, Charlie Zhang. Congrats, 209. All right, um, where's Jack? Jack, one more time, please. Advisory 210. Oh. <laughs> we got to try that one more time. we got to try that one more time. So sorry. Advisory 210. <laughs> All right, Carlos Aguilar. <laughs> Ariana Benoit. Evan David Cullum Burks.
Katherine Susan Kea. Sean Eddings. Aaron Fair. William Geiger. Juliana Gershberg. Hey. Kate Marie Haldis. Christian Jones. Jack Kendrick. <laughs> Sophie Klein. <laughs> Matthew Lee. Amy Leung. Alice McDermott. David McClone. Alexandra Palacios Lopez. Jacob Persons. Fiona Prue. Jocelyn Salazar. Alyssa Shee. Kai Torres. Maritza Valenzuela. That's Kai. Jessica Zhang. Advisory 211, Elijah Afrifra. Cameron Bradbury. Ella Bullock. Gabriel Serta Manchaca. Robert Cups. Adeline Dobb. Alexa De Silva. Nora Duritza. <laughs> Alyssa Huntsraj. <laughs> Emily Harper. <laughs> Jude Holman.
Christina Ivanova. Alexander Ivanushin Hugrin. Sean Hanairo. Alexandros Kroner. Zitwe Ling. Ida Wanjiro Mena. Candy May. Eliciana Nordengreen. Cohen Powell. Frankie Ward. Sophia Weeks. Cole Weiss. Mark Zhu. Congratulations, Advisory 212. Yasmin Biashev. Sarah Cawley. Elliot Graziano. Joseph Heidkamp. Liepa Januszkaita. Clarence Keith. <laughs> Nicholas Lagunas. Yu Lee. Michelle Lang. Emiliana Mouse. Gabriel McIver. Alexander Madura. Rosa Mora. Alexandra Nader. Connor Roach. Eva Romero. Natalie Sautonglong. Madeline Spark. Aza Katia.
Mark Williams. Nancy Zhou. All right, let's keep it going for a 2 one, three is the place to be. Last but not least, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Armendariz. Tamara Arnold. Eleanor Burke. Jack Butcher. Gabriel Capone. Vlad Filatov. Charlie Flakis. Caitlin Froning. Lucy Catherine Gold. Brian Gonzalez. Dario Iantoni. Caitlin Liu. David McDermott. Claire McHugh. Skylar Mest. Ava Murillo. Rachel Wynn. Javier Santana. Carol Tran. Hudson Torres Ward. Anisha Woods. Kevin Shway. Armand Zari. If I could have all graduates, please stand. <laughs> On behalf of the Illinois State Board of Education, Chicago Public Schools under the, under the direction of Chief Executive Officer Pedro Martinez and Chief Education Officer Bogdana Chakumbava, I would like to announce that Walter Payton College Prep Class of 2022 has successfully met all requirements for graduation and is ready to receive their high school diplomas. I now accept the graduating class of 2022. In just a few minutes, you are preparing to move your tassels from the right to the left side 
as a symbol that you have earned the right to graduate and you have left secondary education to pursue your post-secondary goals. Please move your tassel from right to left. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, I present to you the 2022 graduating class of Walter Payton College Preparatory High School. Parents and families, please let the students recess. Students, you're gonna go out the same way you came in, faculty. If you could lead the way. DJ, if you can give me a little music. Let's, congratulations. Oh, <laughs> 